your cat! No, no, don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Oh! 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 Why are you looking at your hand while stabbing me? Oh! <laughs> That's for reviewing Food Fight. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Every Nostalgia Ween, I always wrap up the holidays by watching one of my favorite timeless classics, Disney Sleepy Hollow. I grew up with it as a kid and still enjoy it to this day, with its rich atmosphere, clever storytelling, and ingenious payoff right out of a classic ghost story, which is what it was to begin with. So as you can imagine, I was pretty excited to see one of my favorite directors at the time, Tim Burton, with some of my favorite actors at the time, Johnny Depp, Christina Ricci, and so forth, bring to life the gothic tale of the infamous Headless Horseman. My reaction was something like this. What the f was that? When the film came out, I had no idea what to make of it. I mean, it looked beautiful, and even to this day I'm blown away by its atmosphere, but the story seemed totally insane, it seemed to have practically nothing to do with the original, and it pissed me off that the kid's version was more grown up than the grown up version! Where's all the smart stuff I was promised when I was a kid? Throughout all of my confusion though, there was one question that stuck out the most to me. Is this meant to purposely be a bad movie? You know, along the lines of, say, Army of Darkness, or even the Steven Sommers Mummy films? Was this a tongue-in-cheek satire that a lot of us just weren't getting? If so, did that technically make it better or worse? Batman Robin was a satire, but we all know what a classic blunder that was. But still, it was hard to get a grip on if this was even what the movie wanted to be. There seemed to be a lot of humor to it. Ichabod being a coward, the obsessive amount of gore, and the greatest use of Christopher Walken ever. If you're gonna have Christopher Walken, give him crazy hair, sharp teeth, and only have him growl. That is ingenious. But still, for years, I couldn't get an idea about what this movie was trying to accomplish. Then a series called Monster Madness came around, hosted by... I don't know, I forget his name, but he talked about a style slash genre of horror films called Hammer Horror. I kind of knew what this was, but didn't do too much research into it. Upon further investigation, it was a production studio that got popular in the 60s that did scary films, many of them remakes of classics, trying to give them their own 60s and 70s touch. Doing so created its own type of unique look and feel, one that could pretty much not be mistaken for anything else. Seeing this suddenly made me realize what I, and possibly the majority of audiences, were missing the whole time with Sleepy Hollow. This wasn't a horror film, this was a hammer horror film. A dedication to a style long since gone. Reaching too far, you say? Trying to read too deep into something that's not there? Well, let's take a look at some of the staples of Hammer. First of all, the sets. The sets in Sleepy Hollow were mostly constructed to be colorless, giving a gothic and otherworldly look that looks eerily similar to the Hammer sets as well. How about the story? It has almost nothing to do with the original book. Ichabod is a constable instead of a teacher, a do-gooder instead of a selfish schemer, and he spends his time chasing a headless horseman that is proven to be real rather than just a legend or a story. The whole thing reads like a goofy supernatural crime drama. Like, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Wait, that was technically two jokes. Okay. The Hammer films? Well, they were remakes of classic monster movies. Surely they stay closer to the source material than Sleepy Hollow did. But when you really get down to it, not really. The Hammer films usually took the story and made it even less like the book than the original black and white films did, often resulting in complicated plots that only got more and more complicated as they went into the sequels. Much like Sleepy Hollow's plot, which is so complicated you'd swear it was a bad episode of Sherlock. In fact, even Tim Burton said he felt like he was making a Scooby-Doo episode half the time. That doesn't sound like someone who wanted to strike fear into his audience as much as pay respect to something he enjoyed. Even the actors chosen. Hammer often had very dignified British actors as both the leads and the supporting roles. Here, they fill the screen. In fact, both Christopher Lee and Michael Goff have been in a ton of Hammer horror films. Christopher Lee even has a little nod here with these statue wings looking like a bat. Fitting, seeing how he played Dracula in a series of Hammer films for years. While Depp and Ricci are certainly not British, they both play the parts pretty well of the bumbling hero who must foil evil, and the damsel in distress who must be saved. Though, to be fair, she needed a lot more screaming to complete this Hammer trope. She should have taken a note from Kim Basinger. 
Both of these are the kind of main characters you see continually in the Hammer franchise. The effects as well are both kind of good and kind of bad, much like the effects in the 60s. Most of them are done on set except when they need to take something away, like, oh, a head. And even when they do use CG to add something as opposed to take away, it looks pretty hokey. Kinda like some other layover effects from Hammer. The access of constant gore and decapitations is also a play on how much gore and decapitations were in, you guessed it, Hammer. This is important to note because in the original Dracula and Frankenstein, there was nothing gory at all. It was all the power of suggestion. But the Hammer films knew they had to up the gruesome and load it with gooey body parts and severed heads everywhere. Again, sounding very familiar. But the ultimate proof in my opinion? As I said before, Hammer's color palette often consists of a lot of grays, and even when they did have other color, they were often purposely faded. But in both Hammer films and Sleepy Hollow, the only color that leaps off the screen, because back in the 60s it was so rarely seen in color, was the blood. The blood was always bright red, almost neon. Nothing like what real blood is like in real life. It's pretty hard to find any other genre that has blood that looks distinctly colorful as this. Sure enough, in Sleepy Hollow, look at that. When is the last time you've ever seen blood that color in a movie? Blood you get at a costume shop looks more convincing than that, let alone a studio film. This had to be an intentional choice, because no blood that you see in films nowadays looks like this. And for good reason, it looks fake. This is something that had to be specially ordered. Somebody had to go to the blood person, show him or her a Hammer horror film, and say, I want it to look exactly like that. And that's exactly what Sleepy Hollow looks and feels like, a Hammer horror film. Yeah, it's corny, but Hammer was too. Yeah, some of the effects are fake, but Hammer was too. The style is still rich and so many good actors come in to do a part that, even though gothic and cryptic, is still kinda cheesy. Again, almost identical to Hammer. So, was it intentional to be an homage? It sure feels like it. I think it would have been the mother of all coincidences if not, but even if it wasn't, it's pretty clear the influence is so strong that it might as well be. This came out at a time when classic monster films were once again being remade, with Bram Stoker's Dracula and Mary Shelling's Frankenstein. But have you noticed there's no Washington Irving above this title? This was a Ford Coppola produced film and he almost always put the author's name on top of any remake. But nope, not this one. Perhaps both him and Burton knew that this wasn't a faithful telling of the original. It was a retelling that only an over-the-top, stylized mix of goofiness and gothicness could bring to life. How fitting when you think about it. The same way Hammer horror films were inspired by and retold the stylistic monster classics, now we have a filmmaker who was inspired by and retold the stylistic Hammer classics. Now with that said, if you don't like the Hammer horror films to begin with and find it pretty silly, you'll probably think the same thing about Sleepy Hollow. And that's fine, it's not for everyone. But nevertheless, it's important to note that there is a very specific genre being recreated here that was not just a work of randomness. It took skill to recreate this look. It took clever casting to find the right people. It took major practice to get this film to give off the same feel as the film series that's been practically dead for about 30 years. Whether you get sucked into it or not, there are very careful hands that made silly scenes like this, this. Goodbye, Ichabod Crane. I curse the day you came to Sleepy Hollow. And even this, a little bit smarter than many of us originally gave credit for. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and Happy Halloween!